welcome to the first panel discussion of the uh, of your module on religion culture and society which is offered in level 4 for uh, those following sociology in in our BA degree uh, as you know this module is a interactive multimedia module and in addition to your printed course material all of you also have access to other material through which you can gain more understanding and information about this module. Uh, in this component we have planned for you to have four panel discussions which are linked to various sessions in your printed module through which you can engage more interactively and uh, also deepen your understanding about the concepts and theories that we discuss in this module. So we are very fortunate to have with us for the first panel discussion uh, two personalities who you may have already you may have already met and also who have been closely involved in designing the, this particular module. We have Professor Prema Kumara from the uh, Department of Sociology at the University of uh, Colombo, who is also the uh, the the course director for this uh, this particular module and then we have Dr. Nirmal Ranjit Devasiri from the Department of History also of the University of Colombo who will be uh, uh, speaking on the topics that we are going to talk about in this first panel. So the theme of this panel is why, what is religion and why should we study it? As you know religion is something that is part of our lives maybe something that we take as very normal and everyday. So why should we be studying about it as sociologists, as anthropologists? What is, what is there to learn about it? This is something we already know, you might feel. So in this particular uh, session, what we are going to be discussing is why, why should we really study it? Why should we look at it from a theoretical or analytical, analytical point of view? So my first question is to Professor Prema Kumara. Uh, how is religion defined in anthropology and sociology? Well, uh, uh, if you look at the religion, religion is a one of the oldest uh, social institution uh, which has been uh, basically built culturally and socially for a history of the mankind. But as sociologists and anthropologists actually look at religion in a different point of view, but not religion as a something uh, which we believe or which we practice but actually they try to understand how actually uh, religion impact on society and how society impact on religion. Cal anthropologists would uh, look at it how actually culture impact on religion and how religion impact on culture. So this interconnection, these uh, basically uh, dialectical relationship would definitely actually explore by uh, anthropologists and sociologists. But when it comes to actually definitions of religion, it's a very, very uh, complicated and also very, very serious issue, uh, which is uh, debated uh, among the anthropologists as well as the uh, sociologists. Uh, the definition of actually religion, of course, uh, uh, can be uh, basically draw from uh, two different uh, uh, you know positions so one is uh, what we call uh, actually uh, substantive definition uh, which basically focus on uh, what uh, religious uh, religi what religion is and the other one is actually functional definition so functional definitions always look at what religious does so apart from that there is another approach to under uh, define religion in a broader sense uh, that is actually uh, the uh, the construction of of religion that is what how people actually define religion wh how people uh, understand religion so these are the three major uh, approaches which is very much uh, concentrate on uh, define religion so there is no agreement uh, you know religion cannot be basically uh, defined in one particular ways but there are different uh, uh, ways of defining it but there are disagreement uh, so therefore I think uh, some people argue actually uh, we should not define even religion because it is quite difficult to uh, you know make a de definition on uh, on religion but uh, anyway now uh, 
the religion of course some people also argue that uh, religion uh, as a word actually if you go back to a kind of a genealogical inquiry of that that particular concept the religion so some people argue like uh, like anthropologists like talal lasad would argue actually uh, uh, this uh, so called notion of religion started in in the in the academic uh, discourse the, you know in, in other sense is appearing in 12th and 13th century but prior to that there is some there is no something called religion as, as it is so the religion of course it 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 is basically uh, labeled uh, to understand the people's belief system which uh, which belief systems actually which are very much concentrated on uh, concentrate on uh, what they call the supernatural uh, things supernatural things mean god deities and you know other sort of uh, superhuman uh, 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 people and of course uh, that is how people believe in these uh, uh, supernatural so uh, so religion always actually organized around these uh, belief systems as well as the um, Uh, the uh, the practices actually around its belief system so then when we look at religion then we had to really look at the both the belief systems and also the uh, the practices which is very much uh, surrounded that that belief system so in the different cultures different societies it can be vary from uh, different uh, ways so for instance if you say uh, we have uh, in in buddhism we believe uh, the buddhas buddhas teaching uh, so which is very much actually uh, uh, connected with the where buddhism actually spread uh, you know from india to other uh, southeast asia south asia so including sri lanka in other part of the world you have different variants of of uh, the buddhism so it is very much connected with the existing belief system in those cultures so uh, therefore we could uh, call it uh, for instance in sri lanka we can call it actually singhala buddhism actually incorporated into the singhala buddhist culture that is what we call the singhala buddhism so the 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 buddhism of course very much connected with the thai culture for instance actually that what we call the thai buddhism so so likewise there are variant uh, you know uh, belief systems as well as the uh, practices very much connected with uh, those belief system and practices so so religion of course it's a very very important thing some people argue that religion is uh, is is very very important part of our uh, our everyday life uh, dr nirmal if i could jump to you at this point uh, why should we study religion we are social scientists religion is about belief and the supernatural do you think the study of religion is relevant at this point of time no i mean, I, i think this you know even you don't have to answer that question because it is you know, i mean it's very obvious that why we should uh, uh study religion because you know it is uh, all encompassing and so then now actually the we are in a i mean in a period that you know the the impact of religion in ev- almost every aspect of life is very obvious and earlier it's uh, it was considered to be belonging to the, uh, the, the, the the i mean human beings you know the spiritual uh, life right uh, and but now that is not the case anymore for example we are living in a situation where the religion play a very major role in uh, politics for example which 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 was considered to be i mean in um, for example in uh, in um, uh, western uh, modernist thinking the rationalist uh, thinking so there was a time uh, where it was argued that you know the uh, there, there was a tendency to uh, make a clear uh, sort of manichean demarcation between uh, the realm of religion and realm of politics right so where it was argued that uh, the politics the belonging to the you know the secular uh, affairs whereas religious in the spiritual realm but that is not uh, uh, that is not the case anymore right even though there is a desire to free uh, the realm of politics uh, uh, from religion 
seeing that you know it is quite a negative uh, thing i mean obviously uh, so there, there there's a strong uh, you know the case uh, for that kind of separation but you know uh, whatever uh, i mean however strong that desire to free uh, religion from politics uh so there is a there is a there is a uh this is you know the the i mean what happen in every day that you know the uh, the relationship between politics and uh, religion become closer and closer mm -hmm. right so i i took uh, this the specifically the case of politics because you know that is one of the reason where you know it is considered to you know uh i mean so how do you that you know there is a real need to separate but uh given the fact that it has uh, the realm of politics also uh, being defined in terms of you know the i mean religious the norms mm -hmm. it says that you know religion is important so that is simply you know why we cannot avoid religion and as sociologists uh so i think that that's a i mean from the very inception uh the sociology uh considered the religion mm -hmm. as one of the the main uh, you know concerns and the early sociologists mm -hmm. try to understand uh, you know the the source of mm -hmm. uh, source of religion mm -hmm. uh, i think people like you know the spencer the tyler i think uh, uh, people who are more uh, familiar with them uh, but therefore mm -hmm. it's an all encompassing phenomenon if you want to understand i, I mean i think i think it was karl marx who said it my, my memory is correct you know if you want to understand society you know the religion provided the one of the key you know the entry point to understand the society so therefore it is obvious by you know we should uh, be serious about seriously uh, study religion okay. that's true i really want the some Uh, the, the from the earliest of times of the origins of sociology sociologists have been interested in trying to also define what what religion is so and also to sort of uh, understand how it whether you can separate it as as the spiritual and the sec secular space and the spiritual space can you tell us li a little bit about how sociologists and anthropologists have approached the study of religion i think uh, you see now uh, as uh, to add uh, a bit what i discussed uh, earlier i i think uh, this the religion of course it's a it's a kind of a cultural form mm. and also it's involved as i mentioned belief that takes form of the ritualized practice you know you you have belief systems then of course how do you actually act upon that belief belief system actually by ritualizing it the practice it so for uh, you see now for instance you believe in god then of course that doesn't mean that how you have to show it in the practice so that is why the ritual aspects actually very much important in 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 religion but when it come to that is why actually sociologists take or anthropologists take very seriously on on religion because that is why we have developed a sub discipline called anthropology of religion as well as the sociology of religion so the but uh, and sociologists and the anthropologists uh, they are not actually very much uh, concerned about uh, whether religion is true or false uh, so the uh, whether they, whether they are important and whether they are not important but what actually they are very much interested in that's how actually religion of course as i said impact on on religion you know our everyday life and uh, and everyday our cultural practices so the uh, then of course uh, in a, in the major thinkers of uh, of religion actually like uh, uh, i mean the kind the french scholar and the uh, max weber a german scholar uh, and of course karl marx and sigmund freud so those are very uh, major thinkers of, on on religion but uh, the, when when you actually bring those uh, thinkers uh, actually uh, they are they are thoughts they how they are, try to understand religion so that can be actually uh, sort of a categorized into two different school of thought uh, that is uh, basically the uh, if you take uh, derkhamian point of view uh, they basically uh, try to understand it uh, religion actually bring social solidarity 
uh, religion actually bring uh, you know Thai people together and religious actually uh, develop a kind of a collective consciousness of people and uh, you know uh, in other sense actually religion, they use religion as a kind of a binding factor of, of society so the developing a sort of a strong bond and of course the, uh, the it, it uh, basically helps to create uh, proper social order in, in, in a sense but in the other factors you know people like uh, Karl Marx uh, would uh, say actually religion rather you know create a lot of conflict in the society you know it, it being basically uh, undermine uh, the uh, people's uh, class solidarity and you know the uh, exploitation of people and uh, it might basically um, uh, sort of uh, uh, rather uh, create uh, something uh, very uh, badly effect on, 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 on society. So uh, then of course if you take uh, people like Max Weber, Max Weber is a very interesting figure uh, when you talk about religion. Weber of course always try to argue that uh, how religious actually believe impact on social action, you know, how, how social people, actu people behave here, uh, how actually religious values, religious belief uh, would uh, encourage uh, sort of a uh, develop, develop a capitalist society. So, in other words, he is trying to actually understand the relationship between religion and economy, uh, in a sense, how actually religion encourage uh, religious belief, encourage uh, basically uh, develop a capitalist society. Uh, the, he he's, uh, very much discuss uh, of uh, how Protestant ethics uh, basically uh, help uh, Can you explain Protestant ethics a little yeah, bit? Yeah, but he wrote actually in 1905, he wrote a, a book called The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism. You know, there he wanted to actually understand why uh, certain countries in the Europe uh, uh, basically develop capitalism, why not other countries, so non-Western countries, even in the Catholic countries. Because he argued that the spirit which is very much developed by the uh, one of the a major uh, 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 Protestant religion called actually Calvinism. The Calvin Calvinism is very interesting uh, religious sect, which is very much actually encourage uh, uh, very interesting uh, 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 religious belief system. Uh, uh, one particular factor is that uh, people should have a simple life. Then of course, uh, uh, then of course, they, that that belief encourage also hard work. So when you have a simple life, as well as the, that involve the hard work, that uh, basically what does mean that actually people can save a lot of money. Then that can be actually uh, invest in the in the in the in in in, in, in economy. So having a simple life and as well as the uh, you know uh, working hard, uh, one of the very important Protestant value in this particular religion. Uh, then also actually under Calvinism uh, there is another interesting thing called the pre, pre predestination, right? So that is the word called predestination, that is, uh, you know, the uh, you in order to actually go, go to the heaven, so you have to be a very uh, uh, rich person in this world. So then the, uh, then the God actually will select you to go to the heaven because being a, uh, being a uh, you know, rich person in this world would definitely uh, uh, you know, get a chance to you to go to actually uh, the, the uh, heaven. So that kind of idea is actually very much, then Calvin said, I know I have been selected by the God, but I don't know whether you have selected. So therefore, in order to select uh, by the God, so you need to work hard, you need to be a rich person in this world. So that, that kind of ideas, values in a very uh, simple manner, that kind of a religious value actually basically encourage people to, uh, you know, uh, uh, develop their life quite, uh, uh, quite uh, uh, you know, develop a capitalist life. So the uh, so that that kind of ideas, you know, the values, of course, very much connected with the economic activities. So there is a strong uh, relation between religious belief 
and the uh, economic activity. So he said actually why uh, the uh, capitalist society did not develop in the other part of the world, for instance, the, the eastern part of the world, because they don't have this worldly asceticism, what he called. You know, this worldly asceticism means, you know, you have to focus on this worldly activities. But most of the religion like, uh, say, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, Islam, those are very much actually otherworldly uh, concentrated. You know, think about the 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 the, mm. the next birth. Mm. So the uh, so therefore he uh, basically uh, explained Max Weber explained that if you wanted to actually develop a capitalism in a way, at least to the 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 early stage of the capitalist capitalist accumulation, must be supported by this kind of a belief system. Okay. So. May, may I just ask uh, Nirmal to jump in at this point? Nirmal, how do you then explain the growth of capitalism in so-called non-Western countries? No, I think that there's a, there's Where, a which are strong there, Hindu or Buddhist yeah, influence. Well, there's a big debate about uh, you know the the, the universal uh, uh, validity of uh, Weberian thesis. Mm. Uh, I think even in Europe, uh, so this uh, now actually uh, the capital. No, it's uh, uh, so uh, there are. I mean, there Weber, uh, of course, has a very strong point. And uh, when you you look at, you know, it's. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, I think I, I I'm not an e expert on you know mm. that uh, theme. The later on, you know, there, there's another famous book by R. H. Tony about, you know, this uh, religion and capitalism. Uh, of course, this uh, the capitalism is something to do with your uh, your mind, right? Uh, and uh, so, probably, in a way, I seem I tend to believe that, you know, uh, in Asian societies. The Asians are uh, psychologically more uh, equipped to be good accumulated compared to uh, the Western societies. Now, actually, when you look at uh, the case of China, right? So they have a, so the China is the country with high degree of accumulation. So I think I, I don't know probably this. Um, uh, maybe Confucian ethics and all that, you know, that may be, I mean, given, uh, maybe discuss also com uh, compared to it, you know, in, in, in the line of Weberian thinking. Uh, because this, uh, uh, the, uh, the drive to save and to maintain a very uh, simple uh, lifestyle, right, uh, the contentedness, so those are the uh, psychological properties that you need to be, you know, uh, uh, engaged in accumulation process. At the uh, at the same time, there's another side. Uh, so that is, of course, the crisis of capital. That is not, uh, you know, the, our theme. But you know, uh, you you of course need to be consumerist at the same time, right? So the capitalism produce goods, and so then I mean. So it's uh, it's the other side of uh, the, this Calvinian, you know, thing, right? So the uh, so there, there's a there's a dialectical relationship. Now actually, what happened is that Asia became uh, the center of production, whereas the West has become the center, of, you know, the of consumption, consumption. right? Uh, so the when you look at China and uh, uh, United States, so China produces, uh, America consumes, yeah. right? And so this is uh, so this is something we have, to, uh, you know, seriously consider. Of course, I think uh, uh, I, I, the, uh, now I think the, now Weber, Weber has written uh, more than a century ago. So we, we have to revisit that. Uh, but you know, the I mean that really the what is important for us is to look at uh, the impact of uh, the religious thinking, right on. Uh, the social organization, our, uh, you know, the various aspects of our lives. Yeah. So that is what we have to, uh, you know, the seriously 
uh, consider. I, I don't think that probably, you know, that when we continue this discussion in uh, the next uh, uh, parts, and yeah. so we can go into that. Okay. So I think that is actually the key uh, thing that we need to take away from this, in that in our study of sociology and anthropology, what we are really looking at is how, socio how religion has really shaped social yeah. structures, shaped our yeah. cultures, yeah. our yeah. beliefs, uh, yeah. how those beliefs and practices mm -hmm. have all, all also linked to the very yeah. material aspects yeah. of our life. So, what are, you know, what is just just yes. disturb you? I mean, uh, so the usually uh, so there is a tendency to you know the yeah. demarcate uh, one aspect of our life as religious. Yes, but that is not the case. Exactly. So it uh, it, it it permeates. You yeah. know the every yes. aspect of human yes. life, and so that is why you know yes. it is important to uh, yes. consider religion. And so there's another side. Uh, if I give you you know a minute, and uh, when you look at the present world, actually the the religiosity, the religious behavior has uh, become a very big problem. You know, it's mm. a very problematical area. For example. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, the generally the the belief is that you know the religious is something to do with the spirituality and you know, mm. uh, very the uh, the moral mm. uh, the uh, uh, the um, I mean that's what uh, shapes our moral life and so on. But at the same time, the religious have become instrumental in you know the lot of uh, the social crisis and mm. social conflicts, and it become you know the instrumental in you know the warfare and yeah. right yeah. so it's a the problem creator rather than you know the problem the solver, solver so on so therefore so that's what uh, yes. uh, there's yeah. a big discussion yeah. about uh, religion yeah. I, I, so think, yes. I think that is why you know the sociologists are looking at both uh, uh, the solidarity aspects of religion mm -hmm. as well as the conflictive mm -hmm. aspects of religion I think Nirmal is referred to the conflict aspect of religion, mm. but at also the same time, of course, if you look at the one of the major think of Emil Durkheim, and he was talking about the profane, uh, sacred mm. and profane, mm. the sacred, uh, you know, the the, the 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 even from the primitive, uh, no, I don't want to use that word. Actually, the uh, small societies, mm. uh, you know, these people actually classified things. Mm. Uh, you know, their classification is very very important classified things actually uh, which belongs to sacred things mm. and the profane thing mm. so the, uh, the that can be actually applied to classify all almost all the cultures you know almost every culture they have uh, sacred things and the profane right so now even actually the sacred and profane thesis uh, you know being criticized by, uh, by later sociologists and anthropologists but at the same time the the the, the sacred uh, within the sacred, you would see actually uh, the prophet. Mm. Uh, you know, there are instances uh, where we can see, uh, you see now, even the sacred space can be transformed, transformed. into a kind of, a, you know, the, uh, the mm. profane activities. Mm. The profane acti activities can be mm. carried on mm. uh, basically in the sacred uh, space. Mm. Uh, likewise, the profane actual space mm. can be transformed into a, a kind of a religious. Uh, space, but at the same time, that can be uh, happen in the very complex way in the in the same space. So, uh, but Durkheimian uh, explanation on religion is very very interesting. It will provide us with something to look at. Mm -hmm. But even actually, there is uh, uh, severe criticism on his work as well. Uh, you know, because it is modern, complex, globalized mm -hmm. world. You see now, it it can be yeah. collapsed. Any, any moment. Those categories don't always e remain as uh, sort of in e isolation. Exactly. 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 So th that brings us to the end of our first uh, panel discussion on the theme what is religion and why we should study it. I hope this has uh, aroused your curiosity to delve de deeper into this very fascinating area in sociology and anthropology. Uh, thank you very much to both Nidbal and Prabhu Kumar for joining us in this session. They will also continue to be with us in the next panel. So I encourage you to take a look at the other panel discussions as well. Thank you very much.